Well, now I'm standing in this dry creek bed here. I woke up extra early this morning because my back wouldn't allow me to sleep anymore. And uh, decided to come out and go for a little walk. And I figured I'd make a video while I'm out here. Now, this is a dry creek bed that was, well, it's generally filled in the winter, I'm sure, but I've come here a few times and made videos about uh, this area. It's the uh, Wind River Experimental Forest by Panther Creek, which is where I'm near. And so over here, on this side, if I can turn the camera, right here, I just noticed, we have what they call a maiden hair fern. Maiden hair ferns have black stems and very delicate leaves or blades or you could, you know, it, uh, ferns are one of the most ancient plants and they reproduce by spores. But I'm not sure about the maiden hair fern if it has the same reproductive strategy. I guess there's only one way to find out. May I borrow this, my friend? Just a little piece here. See what we got. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Definitely. So, here we have the fern. And if the camera picks it up, right along these edges, it looks like the spores come off of those edges. Other ferns have them uh, placed along the, the bottom in these little spots. And then as I look up to the left here even further, I see another friend of the woods. These are called Oregon grape. If I can get focused. Yes, Oregon grape are these berries that grow uh, well, Oregon, <laughs> obviously. Sorry about the stability issues. It's kind of hard to have a tripod out here. And these were revered by Native Americans for their medicinal properties, but also because they would make jams and jellies with them, and it would lend a certain uh, tart flavor to them. They're just little blue berries. Just look like blueberries. Hmm. You can see when I come to these places, whether it's a river, an ocean, or just a mountain trail, but particularly with stream beds, I always marvel at the variety of different types of stone. It's something that I hate to say it, but the average person just seems to overlook. I would like to believe that people are more observant than they really are. But with all the conversations I've had with people, and all the things I've heard people say over the years about how unaware they are of nature around them, it just makes me wonder, is there ever the possibility to really share the experience of the amazing I guess you could call it an awakening, or a satori, an epiphany. That realization when you see that every single item around you has been created by nature in one way or another, has been weathered, roughed down. Let's just take any old rock for example. Who knows what it is? A piece of granite? It doesn't matter, really. The rock was formed through volcanic processes. And then over time it broke off of its, you know, home stone. <laughs> home stone, I like that. <clears throat> and then it was slowly descended down the hills from the mountains, eventually getting to a creek bed where it broke up further and further and further. And then the creek dried up, and the stone was left with plenty of room for moss to grow.
<laughs> so now the moss is growing and becoming part of the rock. Temporarily. And that's just the thing. It's all temporary. Everything is temporary. And that's the other awakening realization that I guess we all need to have. Everything is temporary. Everything is temporal. Everything has a tempo. <laughs> and uh, well, maybe when we realize that, As we'll move up cease to have bed, such a temper about it. It becomes a little bit more clogged. You can see up here we have another one of these Devil's Club. But what I really wanted to share was over here. The shelf fungus. Shelf fungus are one of my favorite favorite things to harvest in the woods, but I'm very careful about how often and how many I harvest. This one's rather small, so it won't suit my needs, but I slice them into thin slices, put them in resin for jewelry. But uh, I'm working on some other ideas too. But these are the kings of the forest, and if you're not aware of who Paul Stamets is, he's actually a uh, mycologist here in my home state of Washington. I believe he's from Olympia, and he travels the Northwest looking for these type of conchs, or shelf fungus. And he's discovered a, the largest specimen ever found of the uh, agarica, I believe it's called the agarica. And it was huge. It weighs like 50 to 100 pounds. It's a monster. And it's you can see pictures of him with it on display. And the idea is that, and the reason why these are so fascinating is because in order for them to survive long term through mold, insects, weather, disease, they have to be able to fight off all of these different you know, issues and have a great immune system. And although plant immune systems and fungal immune systems may be, seem different than humans, and they are, a lot of folks don't realize that fungus are actually closer to humans as far as DNA than they are plants. Now, this doesn't mean that they, we act similar to them or anything, but we have found that indeed taking certain mushrooms has a medicinal benefit and seems to boost the immune system. So his theory was the larger the agarica, the, uh, the older it is, therefore, the more likely it is to have these compounds, which could help us out uh, with our immune system as well. And that's been shown to be true with chaga and a few others, but chaga is different. So it grows, on a, uh, it grows on a tree, just like a shelf fungus, but it's more of like a black mass. But fungus are amazing. So now we have... You see up here, it looks like the sun is beginning to come out. And that's a beautiful moment. We'll take one last look back down this, uh, oops, down this stream bed I was walking up. My good buddy Tim is camping with me today. He's back at the bus sleeping still. Since I was forced out of bed from pain, I thought I'd document what I come can. across a friend of the woods. The lowly slug. I don't believe it's a banana slug, but it's a slug nonetheless. Kind of looks like a turd, doesn't he? He doesn't seem to be uh, on the move here. Hey, buddy, how you doing? I won't interrupt your session. There, I just wanted a reaction for the crowd. Looks like you might be grubbing something down. Very sticky creatures.
a lone berry waiting to be picked. This is Devil's Club. Devil's Club has leaves that look like a maple. It grows berries off the top and the leaves kind of make these platforms. Almost looks like a presentation. Down on the stem, if I can get up focused in there, is the reason why they call it Devil's Club. Absolutely brutal thorns. Those ones are actually pretty mild compared to some I've seen. When they get older, they get monstrous spines on them. Beautiful plants at any rate. And the root bark is uh, medicinal.